When it comes to ex-presidents, the media usually takes a mild interest, offering the occasional update but not intense coverage. Of course, we've never seen an ex-president quite like Donald Trump. So how should the press proceed? Adam has more. For four long years, Donald Trump ran the presidency as a round-the-clock reality TV show. Even if you wanted to tune out, you couldn't. The president increasingly frustrated and lashing out on Twitter. With claims now Trump is out of the White House, but promises he's not going away. We love you. We will be back in some form. So if Trump destroys the norms of being ex-president, just like he did with the presidency, what's the right way for the media to respond? I think we have to uh, have a pretty high bar for that which meets the standard of newsworthiness. Washington Post media columnist Margaret Sullivan says, of course, we cover Trump's upcoming impeachment trial. Ditto any other legal woes he may face. But, she adds, there are things we'll be tempted to cover that we shouldn't. For day in and day out coverage of outrageous statements, uh, crazy ideas, attempts to capture the public's attention. We, the press, need to go cold turkey on that. Which she thinks will be easier given Trump's exile from Twitter. Still, the press may have to work to hold itself back because the sheer sprawling chaos of Trump's life offers so many storylines. Trump's plan to make Mar-a-Lago his full-time residence would violate an agreement he signed decades ago. Then there's his interest in forming a third party, his kids' political ambitions, the damage the Trump presidency did to the Trump brand, and his remarkable hold on the conservative base. I think for many members of the media, former President Trump is going to be a hard habit to break. In other words, the Donald Trump show isn't canceled just yet. Adam, that's exactly right. I mean, as Margaret Sullivan said, it, it became an addiction. I mean, people were getting up in the morning, reporters checking Twitter first thing, instantly retweeting or commenting or criticizing the things that the president said. I mean, even now, I don't know about you, but I confess, I, I went to look for w what he was doing today. It's like, you know, it became just this fixation. I mean, it's, it's a habit I'm willing to try to kick. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. But um, I, I think there's going to be a temptation there, right? You're going through some withdrawal, yeah. Emily. <laughs> Yeah, I, there's there's a huge temptation, and I would add that it's a temptation that is going to get a lot of people paying attention to your stories. The stories that we ran through there, you know, is he going to form a third party? Where is he going to live? Can he live in his, his private resort? What about his kids? They're stories that people who loathe Trump and people who completely love him will gravitate to. More eyeballs, more clicks, which is going to ramp up the, uh, the, I think, appeal of them to the press. I think there is an outside possibility, and I can't believe I'm saying this. Feel free to remind me I was wrong in <laughs> a week or two. I think it's possible he will be a little bit quieter than we are all expecting him to. We know he loves the limelight. We also know he's very distractible. I don't think he's good at thinking about two things at one time. And he is right now facing a, a business crisis. His brand is in trouble because of how he was president. That may end up consuming a lot of his energy, at least at the beginning. We'll see going forward. Hmm. I'm not sure it's gonna be as hard a habit to break as you think, Adam and Emily. I think, you know, for, for one thing, he there are things to cover, but they really do belong below the fold, whether that's a physical or a metaphorical thing. He no longer have a, has access to the nuclear football. There's a lot going on in Washington. There's a lot going on with the pandemic. There's much to solve. There's plenty of news without Donald Trump. And and yes, as Margaret Sullivan said, the fact that he was has been deplatformed, which has got to be one of the Merriam-Webster mm. words of 2021, <laughs> is really going to help take him because, because that fueled so much of the crazy, rabid coverage was the, the, the ridiculous thing he would tweet. And, you know, th that, that happens with plenty of politicians. Hillary Clinton tweets something and that gets covered still. So I think having him off of that platform and, and silenced in that way will help with the be below the fold efforts. Yeah, there was the study that showed that 70 something, 76, 78 percent of misinformation about the election um, disappeared or went down on Twitter once he was um, banned. And I think that's significant. Um, my hope is that the media covers Trump like they would cover any private citizen and just cover the things that are newsworthy. As Adam said, I think there's a lot that will be newsworthy, all the legal wrangl wranglings, the business wranglings, 
um, his kids' presidential ambitions that you hear rumors swirling about. But I don't think we need blanket coverage. I think we can go back to assessing what's going on, reporting on what's going on, and then summarizing it for the readers or the viewers. Um, as much as I think some people would like the media to be like Melania Trump on the tarmac landing in Florida in a different dress, just walking <laughs> away without stopping to look around, um, I don't think that's going to happen. He's still the former president. There are certain things that he does that's still going to be newsworthy, but I think we can ratchet back on the coverage of the outrage and the speculation mm -hmm. and the, oh, my God, what happens next? I think we can just wait and see what happens and report on it. You know, agreed. Uh, the fact that he's off Twitter is going to make a big difference. Um, I think it's going to come down to should he be covered and will he be covered uh, by traditional mm -hmm. media? I think he should be covered through all of the upcoming legal uh, things that he's likely to face, including impeachment and uh, se sexual misconduct suits by 26 women. Don't forget about that. Any wrongdoing proven by his acolytes, by his kids, uh, anybody who worked for him, there's a lot still to come. I think it all should be covered. We need transparency and we need to be thinking and, and talking about the things that happened in the last four years. Other stuff, um, like further inciting his uh, supporters, if he's able to find other ways to do that on other social media, sharing conspiracy theories, those kinds of things. Uh, the unfortunate thing, I think, is they will be covered because it's all about the eyeballs. It is all about the clicks. And there will be media, whether it's tabloid or other righty wing nutty media, that's going to cover him. And uh, it's all about making money. And as long as Donald Trump is doing these things, he is going to be money for somebody. The Trump brand is worth something. Donald Trump is worth something because he's conflict. And they're always going to be, I think, for the people. You know, at, at, to hear Adam, about him and we'll listen to the coverage of him. Adam, just quickly, uh, there were some sidebars that came up this week, like the Boogaloo Boys, Proud Boys, kind of turning on him. Those are legitimate stories, no? Yeah, I think that definitely is. I mean, if you have these far right groups saying, oh, we can't believe him, uh, he betrayed us, we thought he was going to stand with us, he's weak. Yeah, I think that's completely appropriate, but he doesn't need to be elevated to the forefront. We don't necessarily need to run down to Florida and get his comment. As Margaret Sullivan said when I talked to her, we don't need to open up a Mar-a-Lago bureau. <laughs>